Hi, and welcome back to our course um, from Media Computation to Data Science. This is the fourth week, Unit 3, in which I'm going to show you some divide and conquer approaches to working with data. Now, we're just going to jump right in and load the frequency distribution library. So go to the project button, open the libraries, and load the frequency distribution analysis library, as Yatka has shown you yesterday. So we're importing this, and I'm going to show you some of the blocks that are not about sorting. Namely, we'll start with the analyze block. Analyze let you analyze a list of data. Let's create a list. Remember that list from Ludwig van Beethoven. Okay, we're going to do that list. It was 9898947522. Remember that list when we were playing with sound effects? That was a list Ludwig came up with. Let's play it back. So we can say for each item in that list, play the note. And we have to transpose it. So we're going to have 60 plus the item for a third of a beat. So we're playing back this list. It's für Elise. And if you look at this list, the numbers here represent notes. This is a sequence of notes. So what happens if we analyze the notes in für Elise, in this theme? If I click on here, we're getting a table. Now, a table is a list of lists, and this table has two columns. I'm going to double click on here so, so we can have it in a dialog box, what we see here in the first column is all the unique entries in that input list. So here, that input list actually has um, nine items, and what comes out of it has six items because some items occur more often than others. So the second column is the count of the occurrences of each unique value in the source list. So what we're getting essentially is a frequency distribution. The first column is a set of unique values, and it is sort of the keys in a dictionary. And the second column is the occurrences of that key in the list that we're analyzing. So we can see that the number 9 occurs three times, the number 8 occurs two times, and then the other numbers just once. This is basically a good strategy to work with data sets so we can get some insights pretty quickly. Let's throw this away and load our passenger list of the Titanic again. It's the Titanic CSV. I'm dragging it in again. So, so this is again the passenger list of the Titanic. And we can see in the second column, we can see the class. So we've already shown you that you can use the keep block to filter a list. Now we can analyze a column. And remember, to get a column, we use map. So we can use map, the second column, in all but the first of passages of the Titanic. Now we're getting the column of the classes. It's a list with numbers um, for each passengers, which class they were traveling on. So if we want to analyze that list, we can just put this into Analyze, and if we click on this, we get 
the frequency analysis of passengers in their classes. So we have um, in the third class, we've got the most passengers, then 216 passengers in first class, which is somewhat surprising, and second class has the least number of passengers. Um, when we analyze a flat list, we lose all the other data. Now we can't find out who these people were in these other classes. And this is what the group block is for. Here is a group block in which we can group all of the whole database and we can group it by an expression and we want to group it by the second column. And now what we're getting is basically the same frequency distribution analysis. It's another table, except now it does have three columns. The first column, again, the unique entries in that list. Here, the classes. The second column, the occurrences. And the third column is a list symbol. Now, if we double click on a list symbol in a table, another dialog opens and it lets us look at the actual records. So what we're doing is we're grouping the database into groups of records. So these are all the passengers in the third class. We double click on the first class. We can get a view on all the passengers in the first class. Grouping data by an expression and then finding out and, and looking at individual records in that group is something that we call drilling down a database. So we're dividing a database into an expression and we're drilling down to individual records. So uh, another thing we can look at is um, we can look at the age distribution. So this is the column five. So if instead of the column two, we enter the column five. Now what we get is a table of all the ages and the occurrences of these ages. So we have 89 distinct ages and um, we have all the um, passengers of that age. Now this is something that is pretty useful to look at. But in the form it is in here, it might be too fine-grained. So we've got, you know, two people who are 45 and a half years old, and we've got one person of 20 and a half years old. It would be interesting to maybe make the groups a little larger. What about decades? Like we want to get all the people from 0 to 10, then from 10 to 20, and so on. So we only have like 10 groups at most. So instead of putting in the expression of, of just looking at all the values in a column, this is a higher order function. This is a ring. We can put in any expression. So in here, we have numbers. And we can kind of use the same trick that we did when we were playing with audio, that we can reduce the quality, the granularity. So we can divide that number by, say, 10. And then we can take the ceiling of whatever comes out of it, which gets rid of the fraction part. And we can, again, multiply it by 10. So now what we get is a larger group of persons that um, are in an age range. So now if we try this expression, we only get eight groups. So this is the group of people under 30, under 40. And this is kind of interesting because now we can use what Yadga has shown you and actually sort this. So I'm going to take out the sort block and sort whatever is in here by the first column, which I'm going to take the less than and take the item so now 
we can sort the age distribution of the passengers of the Titanic um, based on the decades of their ages. And we can see uh, most people were in between 20 and 30 years. Um, grouping data, grouping a database is a powerful way to get a lot of information very quickly. Um, so what we're, what we're putting in records into a group, a group is also called a bin. It's like a bucket of things. Now remember you've seen bins when we were analyzing sounds, when we were looking at the frequency spectrum of a microphone and we were drawing that curve, those were really bins of frequencies that all happen to be inside a sound. And it's the same idea. Here we're looking at the frequency of occurrences of values of entries in a database. There's one more useful block in that data science library. It's in the control category and it is the pipe reporter. Um, if you look at this expression, um, first we're starting with grouping something, then we're sorting it, so this all becomes a very big nested reporter. Now, wouldn't it be nicer to sort of have a process view on this? Let's first do that and then take the result and apply this function to it. This is exactly what pipe does. Pipe takes an initial value, which would be the Titanic data set, and then we can add a string, a sequence of other functions that each take the result of the preceding function as its input. So these functions all have a single input. They are called monadic functions. So we can leave the input slot empty. So now I have the Titanic. I'm getting the all but first off. And I can already look at the example. So this is the data set without the names of the columns. And then as the next step, I would like to group it. So I'm taking this group thing here. So now I'm getting the grouping by the H group. And I can add another step in which I can sort it. So now I'm again getting the same result and the reporter is equally large, but there's kind of a, a sequence in there that visualizes the steps. And just as an aside, if you're interested in how you can do this yourself in SNAP, you can even look at how that pipe block is made. It is just programmed in SNAP using those rings that we showed you. Grouping data is something that lets us glean insights very quickly. And you've already seen how with just a few little functions, we can get interesting insights into the age structure of a population, into the distribution of passenger classes. This is really all I want you to take away from this lesson. But since this is an advanced course, I'd like to show you how we can apply this to another data set. Now, don't worry if you don't understand all of this right away. This is something you might wish to come back later to, to see what else we can do. So I'm actually going to throw away all of this. And I'm even going to delete the Titanic database by just deleting the variable. And I'm going to import another database, which is the database of billionaires. This is essentially the Forbes list of billionaires, but this version of the database that we're also letting you download here was compiled by our friend Austin Corey Bard. And it is from his project, the Corgus Database Project, which is also linked to at the page. So we're importing a list of billionaires into SNAP. This is a slightly larger database. It's got 2,600 entries and a lot of columns. And we can look through these columns 
at the last column we see there is a year. So it starts at the year 1996 and then it goes all the way to 2014. So it could kind of track the wealth of billionaires through the years. Now, for the purpose of grouping data, um, we really just like to drill down and look at the latest data, which is the last year that we're having here that we're looking at, which is the year 2014. So we take the billionaires, I'm going to go to the control category, get the pipe, and we can drill down and just filter it. So we can take the keep items block, we would take the billionaires as an input, and we, we would keep all those items whose year is 2014, and we can again, again see which column this is. This is the column 22, which would be the item 22. Now, if we click on this, you get a filtered version of the database, which only has 1,600 entries. And see, this is why I took um, the, um, um, the pipe block out, because now we can also express this. We take the billionaires as the first input, and we take the keep block as the first step, and it yields the same result. So now that we have the part of the database that we're interested in, let's group it. So we can expand pipe by one and get the group block in here. So the first thing that we like to look at is we can group it by, um, actually, let me open this. Remember, clicking on it and double clicking on it opens the dialog. So we can look at what is in the database. So here's the gender. The gender is the column number 10. So let's group it by gender, actually, which is column number 10, item 10. And let's look at the gender distribution of the wealth of the billionaires. And you can see it's not about equal opportunities. Billionaires are hugely predominantly male. So this is the first insight. Now, this billionaires database um, is actually ranked by the wealth. Now, the wealth can be found in the item in the row 21. So if we sort the uh, database by this column, we should be getting a ranking of billionaires. Let's try this. Let's actually sort this. Sort the billionaires by item 21. So now what we're getting is a ranking. Now we can look at the names. Um, here's the names. Bill Gates, Carlos Slim, hello, Anansi Ortega. Uh, oh wait, we first need to filter it. So instead of grouping it, what we can do is we're sorting it. So now let's again look at the names. Bill Gates, Carlos Slim, hello, Amancio Ortega, Warren Buffett, Larry Elson, and then the Koch brothers. So this is the rank of the persons. Now what I'm interested in is I want to find out the rank of the countries. Which country has the most billionaires and what's the ranking of countries? So instead of sorting them by the records, let's group them first. And let's group them by the countries. The countries, that's um, the citizenship is uh, the third column. So we can group it by the third column to get a list of all the countries. 
and the occurrences of billionaires in that country. And so now we want to sort this by the number of billionaires. So we want to sort this descendingly by the second column. So we add one thing, put in the sort column, and use the second column of our output. And what we got is a ranking of countries by the number of billionaires. Let me double click on this and keep this list around. This is the ranking of which country has the most billionaires. Now there's one more thing that could be interesting is that would be not just the number of billionaires, but the combined wealth of the billionaires of a country. And I would wonder whether that ranking would be different from the ranking of sheer number of billionaires. So how would we do this? So we can group them by countries. And now what I'd want to do is I'd want to insert another column in here. The second column, I want to insert another column that adds up all the wealth of those billionaires. So to add another column, remember we use map. So I'm taking the map block and to add another column, I'm using the list block. So we have three columns. Now I want to make four columns. And I can just reference the existing columns, just like as we were making the Smurf effect with pictures. So the first column stays at the first entry. The second column comes in third. And the third column comes in last. And in here, the second column, there's another column that's going to be the combined wealth. I'm just going to type in this to see whether what we've done, done is right. So now we've added another column. We've inserted a column. And I just put in the word wealth in here. And this is what we're going to compute now. So the wealth is going to be the sum of the worth of the billionaires. And we're going to round it so we don't get too many um, decimal spaces. Also, we can see that this is going to be a number. And what are we going to round? The, the, the combined aggregate wealth. Remember that when we're adding a list of things, I showed you that we can use the combined block. The combined wealth is we're combining something using the addition operator. So what are we combining? We're combining the 20, whatever is in the 21st column of the sublist. So we're combining it and we're getting the 21st column, that is we're mapping the item 21 over the item three of our input list. Let's see how that works out. So now, see, we've got this first column filled with the combined sum of what is in these, um, uh, in this third list. And I just noticed that I made a mistake here. It's just, um, I had the same column twice. So now I'm again seeing, I can again drill down who these people are. So now we can sort it again by the second column to get a ranking of the countries by the wealth of their billionaires. I'm going to double click on this and we can see. So if we're just looking at the number of billionaires. United States is number one, then comes China, Russia, Germany, Brazil, India, and the UK. If we're looking at the combined wealth of billionaires, we're again starting with the United States as number one, Russia, Germany, and then China, France, Hong Kong, and Brazil. So there are different ways to use grouping and aggregation and partial aggregation of the database to get insights. Now, 
if this looks complicated to you, don't despair. This was to show you kind of the range of things that we can do when we look at the frequency distribution. Um, you take your time. We've got some fun questions for you to answer, both in the billionaire's data set and in the Titanic passenger's data set. And ask me any questions you have on the forums. Uh, we're sure to set you up to solve those problems. Folks, this was it for dividing and conquering. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.